We've decoded the intel from the First Order spy, and it confirms the worst. Somehow, Alpha Man returned. That is right, Elfman has returned, bringing with him some leaked skills for Jim Crocodile Cook, which do involve as well Guy Play the Earth Giant, so a very classic uh, GX era card in Duel Links, getting some new skills, that's very cool. But the big thing is three brand new skills for Elemental Hero, Evil Hero, and Sacred Beast that are going to give us some hints as to the brand new box, but also they're very good. Right, all three of them are genuinely really, really good. So. Let's start with the Elemental Hero skill first of all, because it's kind of the most generic, it's the most basic, right? So, during this duel, you can normal summon Neos without tributing. Basically, you're making it be cross duel, <laughs> which is very, very cool. In addition, the follow-up can be used to turn you summon Elemental Hero Neos, so I believe this might be able to be used with Brave Neos, because it becomes Neos on the field. So that might work, if not, it might not, right? Send a card from your hand out to the graveyard, then add one Superimization from your deck, or one poly, local contact, or fusion from outside your deck to your hand. That is right, can I have confirmed, or we can be confirming here, that we're getting super poly outside skill. Now this could be in the box, this could also be a limited to one bundle, which I think it will be, despite some evidence that it might not be in a minute, but I think it will be, because of the whole anime thing of Duel Links where they're like, you know, there's only one copy of this card in GX, so let's only have it be limited to one copy, for the moment. Then send two random new spations from outside your deck to your graveyard and add a Divine Neos to your extra deck. So immediately you've got on board three out of your five materials for Divine Neos, which is pretty good. Now there is a there is a restriction, right? You must have 10 hero monsters and no hero monsters other than Elemental Hero, so you can't play Vision Hero. Your extra deck also contains at least five fusion monsters and contains no fusions other than Elemental Hero, Neos, or Neos Spations. So you can't play you can't play Mars Heroes, you can't play any of that, but you can play two Exceeses which is really, really cool. They're, they're at least giving you some leeway with the deck, right? You're not forcing you into only heroes like the other skill we got, which I really like. But this seems really, really cool. Even if not if not for the Divine Neos, right? Just the fact that you can get Miracle Fusion and then get two bodies in Graveyard and then go for one of the other Neos Fusions, right? So it's kind of similar to the other skill, but in the same way, it's kind of not. So overall, I quite like this. Now, speaking of heroes, we have kind of confirmed we're getting Prisma, which is a fusion substitute target, which is very, very good. It sends the graveyard from the deck as well. This was very, very good with Gladiator Beasts, and so in Duel Links, this could be the resurgence of Glad Beasts, probably not, but it would be very cool if, uh, if that was the case. Then moving on to Evil Heroes, the power leads to destiny. Reveal one card in your hand to the opponent. Depending on the card, the following effects can be used, and it's once per duel, but doesn't say once per turn, so you can probably use this both in the same turn. Reveal normal spell cards, so Dark Calling or Dark Fusion. Send three Malicious Edge from out of your deck to the graveyard. During this duel, you can summon Malicious Edge without tributing. That is not really that relevant, but the fact you're putting three bodies in the graveyard to then be used with Dark Calling, to then banish them, to then summon a, an Evo Fusion is really good. Also, if you reveal Super Poly, Set one Supreme King's Castle, and then add one Malicious Bane to your extra deck. This is the big boy, the big boss of evil heroes that is so good in heroes in general, and you probably would have seen this in Marstall, if you've played that game, if you've played heroes in that game, you'll have seen this. It can't be sure by battle or by card effects, and in the main phase, you can nuke all monster point controls that are less than 3k. And this card gains 200 attack points for each one, so so to become 36 at maximum, which is pretty good. It's still a OTK, really, if you think about it. You're summoning this, and then you could just do more, but you can only attack with heroes. So this kind of a downside, but given that you've got to reveal Super Poly, and there's no way in Evil Heroes to just search Super Poly, this is pretty fair, right? It's saying, if you draw it, this is my ultimate game plan. You have got sacked to high heaven, which I kind of like for evil heroes, right? I kind of like that's the, the way they're going down with the skill. But this skill and activate begins with, with at least one super poly, which could mean we're getting more than one. Or it could mean they're just future proofing, because we know from bundle deals that Konami have said that they, those cards can come to the game out of bundles and have their limits freed in the future if they, if they so wish, right? So that could just mean that future proofing also needs nine monsters 
and none are from either hero or elemental heroes. So you are kind of hard locked into those heroes, but, but in the extra deck, you have to have at least two fusions and no fusion monsters other than evil heroes. So what they're doing is they're saying, you know, Supoli, you know, you can play Mud Dragon and eventually Starving Venom. You can't do that in this. If you want this kind of skill, you can't play the generic removal kind of thing you get with Supoli. So that's a good way of going about balancing it, I think. But of course, you can still play Supoli in any other deck, which means things like Photons. You can technically cheese with the Photon Wyvern, I think it is, Photon Lizard. And uh, if they summon into their big dragon, just super lead away, get your little 1900 fusion on board, and go to town. So, uh, so far, looking pretty good. Finally, we have the Sacred Beast skill, Devoured by Sacred Beasts. Each of the following effects can be used once per duel, but again, doesn't say once per turn. Return one Fiend type with zero attack and defense from hand to the deck to add either Uriah, Hamon, or Raviel from your deck to your hand. So, a search skill, very, very good. Also, Select two cards from hand or face up monsters except tokens on your field, return to your deck, then send three Hyper Blaze from out of your deck to the graveyard. Then, add one Fallen Paradise from out of your deck to the bottom of your deck. And in your next turn, Fallen Paradise will be banished. So, it's giving you one turn to kind of hype the game up and hopefully OTK or establish a very, very big board. Now, what does Hyper Blaze do? It's, uh, it's not really that great being in the graveyard, right? Uh, this is there to give Uriah a 3k attack, because if you're, the skill's intention is you search out your, your big Sacred Beast, you then bounce back two, and you go and grab Fallen Paradise into your deck. But you need to search Fallen Paradise, and how do you do that? With something like Chaos Summoning Beast. So they're very, very heavily leaning on this being the, the card you're going to be getting at probably super rare, I think. And this can be attributed to special summon Uriah, Hamon, or Raviel from hand. Also, banish it from the graveyard to search out Fallen Paradise. And Paradise makes the cards untargetable card effects, or destroyed by card effects when you control them. And if they're in the monster zone, you can draw two cards. So, this might be saying that the only way we're getting Fallen Paradise is by the skill, but I don't think so. I think we'll get it as a card. Looking pretty good now. It does need a deck with one Uriah, one Hamon, one Raviel, and 16 times as your attack defense, which is fine. And no other monsters. Oh, okay. So, does that mean you have to run nine monsters? It must mean that you ha all your fiend types have to be zero attack defense, right? That has to be what it means. So, which, which is fine. You know, it just means you can't play some generic fiend stuff. But if we do get things like, let's go back here. If we get um, Phantom of Chaos, that could be kind of fun. If we get Phantom of Chaos, which can uh, steal the opponent's attack points and original card name and effect. This would be so fun. Now, the big downside is that the way they could do this is by a level cap increase. But we've got max cap on GX, so that's not happening. But this box so far is looking to be very, very good. Of course, we've got fossils, we have evil heroes, we have elemental heroes, we have sacred beasts. And it's a GX fan's wet dream, basically. The only way it could be better is if uh, Murata gets Cyber Angel Vrash, and if, if, if they do, I will be very, very happy. So, uh, Konami, let's see what we can do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next Dawnlings video. Gyms Unlock coming in a few days' time. See you then.